Hello everybody, my name's Kimberly and this is Off-Road Reactions. Today I'm reacting to a rig rundown. This is Breeze GU Patrol, called the Squid apparently, and it comes from a channel called Built Not Bought. And uh, I'm interested to have a look at this GU Patrol. I previously owned a GU Patrol uh, Ute 2004 4.2 litre, and if I could get one with low miles on it, that would be what I would own right now. Having said low miles, mine had 495,000 kilometres on it when I sold it, and it was probably good for another 495, but I don't want to buy one quite that uh, old even if I could afford to buy one, which I can't. Hello guys and welcome back to another so Rig Rundown to episode. Now stick around to the end of the episode to find out how you can win your very own Ultimate Brake Upgrade Kit. We're here in Sydney, the cold Sydney. I'm in my Ugg boots, the Roxies. And we have a, something very different behind me. It's a patrol. That's not different, but what is different is it is the second female ever to be on the Rig Rundown series. Let's get into it. Brie Voto, let's go. All right, so here we've got Bridget's Patrol. She's had this for a long time. See, he hasn't! Even I get him confused. <laughs> Vicky, we'll call her Vicky this yeah. episode. Here we've got Vicky's Patrol. So Vicky's had this for a long time, but it's had a few rebuilds. So this is the latest yeah. and greatest stage. It is. Is it, it sure kind is. of finished? Ah, uh, are they ever finished? No. No. Well, let's have a look at what we've got so far. So what year is it? It's a 2006. 2006 GU Series 3. Okay, going to jump in there very quickly. Mine was a Series 2 2004 model, and I, my preference would be for that because it had the better transfer case. They changed the transfer case because people complained that it was noisy, the square cut gears were noisy. Um, but the, the transfer case after 2004 is weaker. Not terribly so, but weaker. Three, would that be? Yes. Yeah, Series 3. All right, let's just go for it, straight into a full on walk around. The elephant in the room is the colour. What's yes. going on there? Uh, so I recently had it wrapped um, on the Gold Coast by Squadron Spoke. It's called a metallic satin Kenyan copper. Yeah. I tell you what, I like the idea of wrapping four-wheel drives too because uh, of scratches, right? Let's go and rewrap it. Um, I want something a bit different. It come out a little bit more orange than I anticipated, but that's because we put a PPF on top of it. Yeah. Um, so it sort of deepened and sort of... Mine did the up. same, eh? Because yeah. it was like, it comes out with its wrap, but then you put the... It's like a matte film, but yeah. it like dulls the colour down. It yeah. looks sick in photos, though. Yeah. That's the main thing, yes. right? Instagram life. Just for the gram. <laughs> All right, let's go for a walk around. Come on, Zach, let's get closer. Bull bar. What do we got? All right, so this actually... Uh, we're sort of like a prototype by uh, South East Queensland Fabrication who makes like the muzz bars that you typically yep. see on the N70 Hilux. Matt Baker uh, copied you. He copied me with everything. <laughs> everything you see on this car was on it first and Matt seems to have yeah. it after. Um, yeah, so it's got a muzz bar on it. It was originally made for a Series 4 Patrol. Uh, and then we reshaped it to suit the Series 3 and just made some custom hoops. Yep. Um, but it does the job and I'm stoked with it. Yep, perfect. GM antenna, yep. radio inside. What's the winch in there? Uh, broken. There's broken winch. I've never heard of that one. I have a drive tech, but on the recent trip, it actually, it's, it, it died. died. It died. Side. All right. So it needs a new winch. Yep. Spotties and lights. What do you got on here? There's one nicely tucked in there. Yes, yeah, so it's actually a light force bar. Um, just one of the light bars around the strikers up on the roof as well. I'm yep. scared of the dark, so I need lots of lights. There's a lot of light going on. Yeah. These are factory bars. They're factory, tinted, factory yep. headlights, but when I wrap the car, I got everything tinted on it. Yep. Just to make it bit a bit of a blackout. Bit nicer. So we'll come around the side. Scrubs and that, they look like they've been used, which is good. <laughs> it is well used. Um, yeah, I've used to repaint them to try and make it look nice, but I, yeah. ju I just run the look now. It is what yeah. it is, it's a used vehicle. It just, it's every time you paint nice. it, it gets scratched. No mug art flares, so she's removed those. Um, so she's going to get a lot of mud picked up there. Anyway, yeah, um, don't like a bar myself, but that's just personal taste. Still like the scrub bars, in particular the bar is quite okay, but um, I like a kind of flatter top to my bar. I don't like the spectacle kind of look. But uh, nice looking vehicle. 
finished again. Snorkel, that's got no branding on it. Who made this one? Uh, so it's actually from Outback Equipment. It's oh, a right. tough terrain uh, snorkel. Yep. They just sort of brought them out, so I'm sort of just trialing it. So yep. far, so good. Yeah, it's looking mint. Um, what else? Were these part of the scrubs that got all made together? Or? Yeah, so this is all made with the bull bar. Yep. I got everything made at once. Um, I've got wider, uh, I guess, scrubbies and size steps you'd say than typical, but yep. that's because I use my vehicle and I sort of like them to be a bit wider to protect yeah. the vehicle when off-roading and stuff like that. It's a step as well to get in because it's yep. lifted. <laughs> um, anything else on here that, oh, well, you've got the big old Scoopy Boy. That's not factory. Yeah, no, it's just a cross-country scoop. Yeah. I haven't got the intercooler to match, I cheeked just, out on that. It just cools the engine down because <laughs> it's a TD. Yeah, um, I actually brought the car with that scoop and I've just liked it, so I've just left it and haven't yep. changed it. All right, we'll get into the engine man in a second, but I think what we'll do now is we head to the back of the car. There's a pretty sweet canopy set up on this, so let's go take a look. All righty, tent and awning and canopy and tray and all the things. It looks great back here. I do like to see these canopies and trays and how they're set up. The one thing I, I really, really like about the control, uh, bearing in mind that they will break the chassis if you overload them. And actually, you know what? Name one single four wheel drive these days that won't break the chassis if you overload them. Uh, but the GU Patrol with coil springs will tear the caps off the chassis. And I actually have my chassis modified to my specifications uh, to stop that from happening. Well, to fix it after it happened and then stop it from happening. And uh, what I like about the patrol is a really short back end. And this is even better because the most of the canopy is forward. There's not very much behind the axle except for the big heavy spare tire, of course. And what I'm not sure if that's a jerry can holder or what it is. That means the tent kind of overhangs the rooftop tent. I'm, I'm not actually pro rooftop tents, I, I'm not a user of them myself, but uh, I think if I was a user of them, it would be that kind of tent. I'm sure they'll talk about it later. Yeah, you know, I've done, it's been a work in progress, but we're sort of getting to the end of this stage. I just run the 230 Sabre rooftop tent with their 270 Falcon awning, which actually I've converted to a 180 because you convert it from a 270 to 180 so you can, you know, enter in the rear oh, at the rooftop. Oh, right, yeah. Um, well, is that something that's permanent or is it just the way it it's just up? got a strap that they can okay. put on it so yeah. you know if i want to enter from the side because the saber you can enter rear and mm. from the side but i prefer to enter from the back of the vehicle yeah um so i've just converted the 270 to a 180 but i have the option to go back if i wanted yep. to that's yeah that's cool and then train canopy it's a g-works train canopy it's full aluminium um it's been beaten on. I was a bit concerned actually because I used to run a steel tray and this yeah. vehicle, I brought it to go wheeling. I wasn't really a tour until like the last six months when I've got this canopy on and added all these things. But um, I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked with it. Yeah, you're worried the alley's like a bit softer and it'll yeah. like have a few but things, no, but it's, it's good, it's strong. I'm not a fan of alloy trays either and I totally agree with her. They are a bit weaker. Um, I, I suspect this box is actually adding a lot of rigidity. There's an awful lot of other stuff there as well that probably add to the agility, but rigidity. But my preference is steel. It's yeah. strong, it is, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's this uh, two meter tray with a 1600 canopy. The canopy is jack off as well. So yeah. I often do that, take the canopy off and this whole setup when I go wheeling to be a bit lighter and mm. you know, less parts to damage. Yep, and a couple of jerry holders on the back. Do you use like one as a bin or is it? do you actually put jerrys in there? Yeah, look, I actually kind of regret getting two jerrys. Yep. Um, I never use them. Yeah. One is just to store coolant and the other one just becomes a bin. Yeah. Um, so I could have got away with either like a ladder maybe or just two spares. Yep. Um, probably shouldn't have gone with the jerrys, but they, they're still usable. Yeah. Yeah, I would have gone with two spare tyres. Although that contradicts my kind of statement about weight, it's it's not too it's not too far back that you notice it's uh, forward of the table um, when a lot of them aren't. So I would have gone two spare tyres, but then I would have had smaller tyres anyway. Use them as much as I thought. Sweet. So it's the 37s? Or yes. Th yeah, 37 on the back. Um, Max tracks in the rear drawer. There's a rear drawer tucked under here. Yeah, I've got a handle drawer. You just got a bit of. Um, it's normally got my recovery gear. Yep. Um, it anyway. is a sealed drawer, but I just, all my dirty stuff, I tend to just chuck in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have the bin bag, obviously, because I've got my Max tracks on here. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of like throw all my dirty stuff in the trundle drawer. Or yep. I can fit my canopy legs in here as well. So if I'm oh, traveling, handy and I want to have the legs, be able to remove it while on the road, I can fit my canopy legs in yeah. here. Sweet. All right. So the canopy jacks off, as you said before, you can see the four bolts uh, over here where the legs attach. And that's a really good idea. My canopy was like that. I used to have to take it off with a forklift. 
Um, so yeah, it's a good idea to um to have it jack off like that if you want to stay places and drive around and leave your home behind. Alright, let's look in the canopy. Oh, it's got these. I noticed a little water filler here. Has it got a water tank on board? Yep, so I've got 60 litres of water. Um, I've got a pump on this side that just activates, you know, yep. obviously the water pump. So the, the passenger side of the vehicle is pretty much where I live out of when I'm yep. camping. It's got my fridge, I've got my pantry and stuff here, um, drawer and table combo as well, and my EcoX gear speaker, which yep. seems to be the crowd favourite of the internal of the canopy. Uh, yeah, uh, not into music when camping. Don't, don't want it at all. Actually, not even at all. But uh, anyway, she's an awful lot younger than me. So my canopy also had a 60, 75 litre water tank built on the side there like that. This is a really neat little setup. I suspect that upright fridge is a compressor fridge and not, well, to get this bound to be a compressor fridge, not an absorption fridge. Um, my preference isn't upright and my preference isn't bin type fridges. Uh, I, I prefer the drawers, so in place of that particular fridge, I would have two drawers, uh, one above the other, and one would be fridge and one would be freezer. The only issue with that is when both loaders are running, it does draw a fair bit of current. Um, I've got one of those flashy lights, all that yeah. good stuff, party yeah. mode. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this living size, so I've got the 85 litre Bushman's upright fridge, just a draw and table combo. I've also got the full 12 volt system, which we'll probably get into Looks later. Looks super but nice. Well, it's yeah. in here, so it's full red arc. Yeah, so. Red vision. Uh, yeah, I've got the red vision display screen, yep. the vehicle management system, the red vision one, uh, manager 30, yep. 2000 watt inverter, and two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Everything's red arc. Yep. It's like literally the exact same as mine. <laughs> yeah, it's a good setup. And it's did G work? Works do that, or was it, who did they fit out? So G Works works with a company called uh, Twelve Australia. So this yep. is called the Vault Series. They have three different Vault Series packages that you can put in train canopies. Um, so yeah, they made the panel, and um, the Vault Series did all the electrical side yep. things. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. A real big believer in all of this in electrics in, in the canopies thing that seems to be the way to go these days. You know, uh, I, I know everybody's different to me, but I I like to keep it really simple. And if I have to pay for two lithium batteries to run, I don't know what on a two thousand watt inverter, then you know that's not for me. Pantry and stuff here, um, drawer and table combo as well, and my EcoX gear speaker, which yep. seems to be the crowd favourite of the. Just come forward again. Yeah, we were talking about the lithium batteries and the and the panels and all that sort of stuff. Now I get that a lot of people want those things, but my question is, um, for me, what am I going to use it for? And I have a lot of electronic equipment. I, I have probably about four radios. I generally carry, uh, so I have uh, devices as well, so I typically have two phones. Um, I have tablets running mapping software. I carry a laptop, but generally don't use it unless I'm in a city or town somewhere. I have no reason for a 2000 watt inverter. Therefore, I have no reason for two extra lithium batteries at great cost. Therefore, I have no reason for all the extra weight. I get it, everybody's different, but for me, it's like, why? Don't need it. I need a spare, I need a battery to run my fridge. And yes, you could pay for a lithium battery. Um, my thoughts on that is why do that when I might want to use the battery for starting and I might also want it to kind of literally replace the starter battery, take it out and put it in the starter battery's position. Now, you could do that with a lithium. You can't do it with some other batteries, but you're paying a lot of extra money 
to do that. Now, the other thing is lithium batteries and other deep cycle batteries won't charge off a car alternator unless you've got a specialized multi-stage 12 volt, 12 volt charging system, which is part of what's in the back there, but that all costs money. I can charge a ordinary car battery with my alternator just by connecting a wire to it and a little thin wire at that as well, as long as I don't want to start from it. Um, so yeah, a lot of money, extra way to run my fancy stereo system so I can party. And that might matter to a 20 something, but it doesn't matter to me. Three different Vault Series packages that you can put in train canopies. Um, so yeah, they made the panel and um, the Vault Series did all the electrical side of yep, things. Yeah, yeah. I noticed you got this as well. I got the same thing. It's a patrol thing, you know, when your car breaks down. You've heard. The GME save your life soul thing. You need it when you What do they call it? The personal locating beacon. beacon yeah, the yep. LB. Um, it's kind of like hit the button, the choppers come and rescue you when you break down. Yeah, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Well, no, they don't. don't. Don't hit your BLB if you break down. That will get you a really, really uh, hefty fine. Uh, PLBs are for use for uh, life um, endangering situations. It's fine, it's reliable. It's a TD. Yeah. Should we go to the other side? Yeah. Let's have a look. All right, so I guess this is more of my storage side. Yeah. Um, I've just got my two slimline drawers here with a face on top of it for storage, and then my drop down roof shelf as well. Um, still what do you mean drop down? It's like a drop down roof shelf. Or well, like it comes down? No, it's just what it's called. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, that's flat. <laughs> it just comes no, down on struts. I yeah. need that. So you can stick chairs up there. Yeah, so I typically put my like shoes or like mm. bedding, like pillows and yep. stuff like that that you want to be kept clean and sort of out Quick of the access, mess. So yeah. yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, and I had a separate one down the bottom under all of this stuff for the dirty stuff, the stuff that I didn't want. But yeah, no, it's it's pretty much just the storage side. Everything in here is actually removable. They got the uni struts on like the rear wall, the roof and the yep. flooring, which everything is just completely bolted down. So if I ever need to Change empty it, it out or move stuff around, I can put it yep. in the setup. And then a bit more electrical, is that a solar input or an output? Uh, it's an output, output so obviously yeah. you've got outputs on each side, your cigarette sockets yep. and some plugs and stuff like that. The solar be fixed then, do you have any yeah, other so roof? Yeah, so up, up the top, top there, top there, there is the Anderson for the solar for the 150 watt solar panel I've got yep. on the roof. Um, and then obviously this is just if I ever need to charge it, I can plug at in my home, lead yeah. at home or whatever, but I, I never need to do that. Between. So you have this set up for a while, eh? Like what would you, is there anything you would change on it? Um, yeah, I love this setup, but like I do. The only thing is, I wish I probably went a smaller canopy. Mm. Um, I use the space, but typically when you have so much space, you use it too much and then you go overweight. And yeah, like that. yeah. Plus, just I like that. I really like that attitude. Yep. Don't, don't go extra space. Um, but then also, I'm really intrigued that she's concerned about weight, but then she's got extra batteries and things that, that I would not have in there. But, you know, I've already talked about that. Yeah, I, I like that attitude though. No, don't go extra space because you'll just fill it with stuff and your car will end up too heavy. And that's really important. You know, she goes serious off road, what she calls wheeling. Um, you know, power line track, that kind of really difficult sort of terrain. But um, for touring, it's even potentially more important. Just with how much I wheel the vehicle now with the touring setup on, I kind of wish I went more of like a. 1200 to 1400 box that way i can have the tray sides on the rear yeah. with just like more storage just throw it, yeah. stuff like firewood and stuff like yeah. that and then just having a smaller canopy so it's a bit lighter and i'm not yeah. so cautious when i'm really interested also to hear her mention firewood because that's the reason i don't have a rooftop tent uh being a tour operator i have to carry firewood for the whole camp but it's something you might want to consider yourself as well if I have to carry firewood a distance, how am I going to carry it? Yeah. It's such a big setup. It makes a massive um, Otherwise, I love it, but I, if I'd go back and do it again, I'd probably just go a bit of a smaller setup. Yep, sweet. All right, let's jump inside the car and then we'll do engine bay. Woo! That's nice. All right, we're in here with short legs and everything. This can go back a little bit more. A little bit. Bridget has shorter legs, but Vicky's got slightly longer legs. There's a bit on in here. I can probably see a lot of what's going on, but run us through some of the stuff you've added. They're really interesting. <laughs> they got that little steering wheel cover on the on the wheel. 
GE patrols, steering wheels absolutely fall apart, every single one of them, and nobody bothers to recover them. They just get a cover to put over it. And yeah, the seats don't go back very far. I had stuff behind my seat, and uh, it can be a little bit cramped. Added. Um, all right, so pretty much first off is the seats. I've got the Shulman seats in it as well oh, at the yeah. moment. The same ones. Yeah. Hey, this is like the same car as me, I'm telling you. you Everything. Me, you, you, I, can't me. you were first. I, the, you have these seats. The before wheels. Me. You've got in your car? Yeah, true. They're your old ones, the bronze wheels. Yeah, I've now changed them. Same 12 volts, same seat, same radio. All of it. You just... When's the it. Duramax coming? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Probably sooner rather than later. I'm going to say that. Yeah. yeah. Stick with the... If it, that's... Well, if it's a 4.2, stick with that. If it's a 3 liter, yeah. Anyway, I've got the Stillman seats. I've got the Polaris Max head unit. Obviously, in my aftermarket gauges, I've got boost, water temp, oil pressure. And down here, I've got a digital EGT gauge. Yep. Um, lockers, switches is that because it's twin locked. Obviously, my GME XRS up here with the roof console. Mm, I don't have this. It's just cool roof console. Well, single it's cab, cool. you kind of need... Well, I do, but it's a shitty made one. You need all the room. Yeah, you do. For it's, storage. Yeah. yeah. Um, all the boost gauges and pyrometer and everything suggests it might be a three litre. Let's see. 100%. Um, other than that, I've honestly kept the interior pretty simple. Yeah. I don't like to go sort of you know, to aftermarket and put like digital things. Yeah. I sort of like, I bought this car because I like simple. Yeah. It's like TD, it's old mechanical, it's easy to fix. So yeah. I don't like to add anything that's going to cause more headaches. So trying to keep it as simple as possible. Um, most luxurious thing is probably the head unit. Mm. Um, it's pretty car. flash. It's like a big iPad. So just saying, you know, uh, boost gauge, pyrometer, um, or EGT as she called it, all all typically found on three liters because the three liters are a bit fragile to have our timer but it sounds like it's uh, the old mechanically injected um td4.2 so not even the tdti so why would that engine be in a, in a series three okay turbo timer as well yeah but the turbo which timer. kind of makes sense i mean it is turbo but is it a bit of wank factor or do you actually use it Oh, I actually use it sometimes. I kind of need it. The Duramax needs to, because I turn my engine off, and then if I a hot, and if I start it again, the turbo's like freaking out. It doesn't boost, because yeah. turbos need time to cool down, so. Exactly, yeah. Turbos I don't are, use it that often, but if I'm on the beach and I've done some hard, hard driving, driving yeah. or like it has been getting warm, yep. then I will just set it for like two or three minutes and just let the car cool itself yep. down a little bit before completely switching off. Yeah. Does it have air gone? It does. Oh my God, this is amazing. All right, let's have a look at another bonnet. All right, it's rare to see four wheels with aircon, especially patrols. All right. All right, I'm going to leave that there. If you want to see more of uh, Bree's GU patrol, you can watch this video yourself. I'm sure there's aftermarket wheels and aftermarket um, springs and shock absorbers and radius arms and all the rest of it. Um, my preference, again, is for stock standard radius arms on a patrol. They're perfectly good perfectly uh, usable, uh, King Springs and Coney Shop Absorbers. Um, so I'll let you, in your own time, have a look what Bree's uh, done different to what I would do. It's a good looking vehicle though, I do like the colour and uh, I do like that shorter box and interesting that she even wants a shorter one. So there you go, that's Off-Road Reactions, I'm Kimberly. See you next time, and don't forget to subscribe.